All right, hey everybody. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use LucidPress in order to make various documents that we would like to print out. And you'll find that this makes these kinds of documents way easier to use than trying to do the same thing in either Google Docs or Microsoft Word. And it is similar to a desktop publishing software such as Microsoft Publisher or Adobe InDesign. And so let's just see how we can do this. I made a new document and you could do this either through going to your Google Drive and creating a new LucidPress document after connecting that, or you could just log into LucidPress and make a new document from there. But I am in this screen right now, which is where you will be after you make a new one. And if I want to change the title, which is something I should always do once I start, so I don't get a bunch of untitled, and I will call this one tutorial, yay, for fun. Okay, and you'll see the various setups that we have right here. We have our, um, our options for whatever we are choosing, which right now we are on the page. So we could change the orientation, or we could change the margins, or we could change the complete backdrop like that. And I want this to be in the landscape view. So I'm just gonna switch it like that, and there we have it. And if you are using a different type of paper, you can do that. But I am going to use the standard eight and a half by 11, and I am going to keep my margins at 0.5 inches and my background at white. Now we can add several things here. We could add text, we could add images, we can add videos, which we are not going to do today because this is for printing things out. And we can add shapes as well. And so let's have the first thing that we do. Let's just add some text. And you can see when you add some text, it puts all this little filler text into there. So you could expand it, mess around with that. And I am just going to take all of that text and delete it. And I will pretend I am making a book and I will call this book, Kevin gets a new bicycle. Bye. Oop, there we go. Bicycle's hard to spell. Should then come and get a new bike. And I'll add an exclamation point and I'll add another yay. Boom. Okay, now we can, if we click outside of it and just move right there, we can move this anywhere that we want to. And you will see those little blue lines start to form to help us align it. And this will be a title. So I'm just going to have this be in the middle. And obviously that is way too small for um, a title. So I just need to highlight the text and you can see before where we changed where we changed the page layout we could also change the text now and basically whatever we are editing how we can change it will be over here so i want to make this bigger first of all because that's no good and you can see it's not fitting in the text box so i could just expand this text box and make it bigger and then move it around and you could change like the italics and all that. You can change the fonts and let me pick for some fonts here. Let's see, you know, this is kind of a small collection. I don't really like any of these fonts. What am I gonna do? Well, you can either upload your own fonts that you have on your computer or you can go to manage fonts and you could choose from this whole host of fonts that uh, to choose from. So let's try calligraphy. I wonder what that looks like. Um, that's a little too fancy for my bike getting story. How about novelty? Kind of like this one, Firecat. So if you want it, just turn it on, done. And now if I look for Firecat, it will be there. Cool. Get yeah. okay, there, boom. And we can change the color of it. Uh, let's have it be green. What else we got? All right, we could add the little little effects to it. So if we wanted to do like a wave effect and we could change the amount of bend like that. And you could just kind of fiddle around with all these different effects and these rulers. So if we wanted, like if that spacing wasn't good enough and we wanted to put it down, we can put it down like that. Um, what else? Columns, blah, blah, blah. 
And if I go to style, we could put in the fill for the background of that, but I don't really want to do that right now. We could add a drop shadow if we wanted to do that. And we can change the angle that it's at. Whoop, that doesn't look any good. And I will go back with Command Z to undo that. And there are other different little effects and styles that you can play around with. Now, I have my title right there, but let's say I want a little shape in the background. I can just go to shapes and I will pick this rounded rectangle. That looks good. Oh, got there, man. Oops. Need to unclick it, I guess. There we go. That's better. And I want this to be the background of my text. So, whoa, I can't see anything. Don't worry, we'll fix that. And I'll make it like that. And you can see down here below our little options, which have changed because we are now using a shape. We have these layers right here. So if I want to, like right now, the square is in front of the text. The top one is in front. So let's say I wanted to change this. All I need to do is control click on it. Let's do this up here, control click. And I could either bring it all the way to the front, throw it all the way to the back, or just bring it forward one uh, one space there and that is oh no, I want to put that one backwards and now you can see that I can see my text which is good and I want to change the background of this and I don't really like any of these so what can I do you can see down here they have that weird little value there and that is what's called a hex color and it uses a hexadecimal value to determine the red green and blue and uh, the amounts of those inside of it so if I just Google hex color and just go in the first link there, you could pick any color that you want. So if I wanted, what color would be good? So if I wanted like a darker yellow like that, I could pick that. And then that is the hex value of that color. I just copy it, paste it, boom. Now it is like that, and that is the border. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> let's keep the border at black, and let's do the fill, the color that I had. Boom, now you can see that it looks like that. And if we wanted to change the color, we could change, or the, the, uh, the border, we could change the size of it, and now you can see you have uh, that right there. And because I have not selected anything, this goes back to the page and the style of the page. Now let's say I wanna move this around. Like if I go like that, oh man, I gotta move that. Like that's kind of annoying. So what we can do is if we select everything, so if we shift, click, shift, click, that should select both of them and then control click and group it. And now you can see in the layers, this is one group and under there it are the individual elements of that group. And if we wanna individually edit them, then we can we could ungroup them. But for now, now if I move this around, boom, it works perfect. Now I want to add a picture into my story. So there's several different ways I could do that. Uh, first, I'm just gonna go to images. And here you can see I can upload a picture, like if I already have one from my computer. These are ones I've uploaded before. I have, I could find them from inside of my document. And then down here, I could add new pictures. So. If you have something from Facebook or Flickr you wanted to add, you could do that. But I'm just gonna go into Google search and I am going to, let's try a new bike and search it. And none of those really satisfy me. New bike, happy. Um, hmm. That looks pretty cool. So <laughs> I don't really bear a mention of resemblance to this person there, but that's all right. And now if I just click on it, you can see, oh, must have messed something up. I can see my picture right there. And I could, if I hold down shift, it will do it within proportions. And I could have that right there. Cool. Now, Let's add some text to this first page. So again, I am going to add text 
and if I click off it, I can move it around. Another cool thing you could do is insert text from Google Drive. So if you have some document, and for some reason, my like this is from my other Google Drive account. I'm not sure why that happens, but I have all of my different documents. You could search them. And if you just insert the document, it will insert it right into there. And that could be useful. So let's just say I want to one day Kevin didn't have a bike. Right. And let's have that be like that. We're going to make this bigger. And let's change the size of it. And I'm going to change this person around too. So we're going to make her smaller and we're going to make her wider too. Oh. Doesn't want me to do that. Okay. There we go. All right. And actually let's do it this way. Love her. And then we will have a little something underneath there. One day Kevin didn't have a bike but he really wanted a bike badly. What am I going to do? Thought Kevin. Hey, and now let's say I want to keep it on this page but I can't really like expand it to under there if I want to do it. What can I do? Hmm. Well, you can make a new text box. Oops. I mean, Command Z always undoes it if you mess up. Then do a text box and then put it underneath like that. Hmm. Delete that. And you can take this right here. And if you hit this little arrow, yeah, we can do the overflow text and this, if you drag it into there, now these text boxes are connected so that you could put your text wherever you want. Then he had an idea, a wonderful idea. And you could see that I have used both of these text boxes. It's not perfectly done there to have it sort of wrap around my picture right there. Um, and now I want to add a new page. So I can go to new page blank and there's page two, page one. Uh, what else have I not covered here? So you can comment on it. If you are reading someone else's, you can comment like, hey, that's a great story. And you could go back and forth just like Google Drive. Um, anything else here? You could put in a table. We're not going to really do that here. Uh, and I think that kind of covers the basics of it. You can go really far into this. Something I think is a good idea if you want like a picture in there that you cannot do natively with inside of Lucidpress. If you were to like new bike, or, whoops. You can go into Pixel Editor. And this is an online photo editing software that you can just make a new image, make sure it's transparent, and then make all of your changes inside of here, then save that as a PNG, and then upload it. And you will be able to put any kind of changes that you want into there. But that's all I am going to go over for today. You can add many things to your heart's content and it is really simple to figure out. Just wanted to make this quick tutorial in order to get you started. So hope that was helpful and have a good one. Later.